The EPA says that glyphosate is not an endocrine disruptor, and you can find that in all of the EPA's work. But then there are studies like this one from 2013 showing that glyphosate induces human breast cancer cells growth via estrogen receptors. Well, that doesn't sound good. This is glyphosate at 10 to the minus 12 or 10 to the minus 6. Uh, molar promoted the growth of T47D cells via estrogen receptors. It produced alteration of estrogen receptors, which can be blocked. Glyphosate altered estrogen receptors by increasing the expression ratio of estrogen receptor alpha and estrogen receptor beta. It changed the ratio of the receptors. And I'm excited to talk about this one. Glyphosate had an additive effect with genistein. What is genistein? I'll tell you in a moment. On estrogen receptor uh, activation. And I'm excited to talk about this one. Glyphosate had an additive effect with genistein on estrogen response element transcription, um, activation, and cell growth. What is genistein? Genistein is a polyphenol found in soy and beans. And I recently came across a very interesting article talking about problems with genistein in humans. Check this out. Yet another reason you probably don't want to be eating soy or beans, guys, but glyphosate in connection with genistein had worsening effects on the estrogen responsive elements in the genome. These are elements within the DNA that become transcribed that turn into estrogen receptors. This is the DNA before it becomes the protein. But look at this study. Genistein lowers the fertility with pronounced effects in males. What will the soy boys say now? Meta-analysis on preclinical studies from the 27th of June, 2022. Gen Genistein is an isoflavonoid found in a plethora of plant-based foods. That's why I don't eat them, guys. These meta-analyses show that genistein has detrimental effects on male reproductive system and on the progression and sustenance of pregnancy with more pronounced adverse impact in males, particularly when exposed in utero. Guys, you hope your mom didn't eat a lot of soy or tofu when you were in the uterus. Um, probably bad for women as well, but genistein is also found in things like beans and peanuts. There's a little bit in beer. The biggest doses are in all beans, black beans, white beans, et cetera, and soybeans. You avoid those, you're going to avoid genistein. This is what I talk about with my work. The fact that there are polyphenols in these plant foods that can have negative effects in humans. If you go to the internet, if you go to the interwebs, you can certainly find benefits of genistein. But will you be alerted to the fact that there are side effects to these molecules that may not be great for humans? And I would continue to argue that I do not think that there is sufficient literature to suggest that we get any benefits from these polyphenols like genistein and things like beans and soy that you can't get other places with less detrimental side effects. Eating soy does actually really appear to be detrimental from a hormonal perspective for both men and women, but at least in this study, especially on men. I'll show one more epidemiology study with glyphosate and then move on to talking about other pesticides in relation to my favorite topic, not favorite topic, kale. This paper, non-Hodgkin lymphoma and occupational exposure to agricultural pesticide chemical groups, active ingredients, systemic review, meta-analysis. They say, despite compelling evidence that NHL, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, is associated with certain chemicals, this review indicates the need for investigations of a large variety of pesticides in more geographic areas, especially in low and middle income countries. So you can see here that there were associations between pesticides and NHL, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma subtypes were reported. B-cell lymphoma was positively associated with phenoxy herbicides and the organophosphorus herbicide glyphosate. Not all studies have showed this, but some epidemiology does show this. And this is, again, I think part of the things that led into the IARC's conclusion to classify glyphosate, I almost said kale, as a class two carcinogen. I don't think kale is a class two carcinogen, but I'm not a fan of kale in any way, shape, or form.